Welcome to Shots and Stitches from the Lucky Needle. On this episode of Shots and Stitches, tag along with John and Tony as they begin planning their upholstery designs for the Koken Barber Chair and tackle the challenge of disassembling it. Check out a few other projects, tips, and tricks in Tony's garage and share in some shots along the way. But first, by viewer request, watch as they break out the overlock machine to give John's style a more southern flair. We hope you enjoy this episode. Cheers! Hey, what's up guys? John from The Lucky Needle. Um, I just recently got back from a race out there in Wisconsin. It was a good time. Uh, the last night we had some really good Bloody Marys. But anyways, I'm back home for about a week now. So Tony and I are gonna try and shoot another episode of Shots and Stitches. We really appreciated all the positive feedback you guys gave us last time. And uh, yeah, just gotta stop off at my favorite little local beer and liquor store, pick up some High Life, and then we're gonna head over to Tony's and uh we're gonna do a bunch of stuff where i think we're gonna start working on the barber chair that you saw in the last episode and then we've got some popular questions i get asked on the forum all the time we're gonna bring up some of that so you guys get a little learn a little bit too so anyways follow us along we're gonna have a good time today Shots and stitches, shot glasses. Thank you, Casey. Those are awesome. Here's the system. Shots and stitches. Cheers, guys. Is that a good batch? That is a good batch. Yeah, it's got that good at the end. <laughs> yeah, it's a little nicer now without all that hair. Yeah, because I had the last yeah. time had all the hair underneath the tube. That's it. Let's get this party started. All right, yeah, so we should start with our ceremonial Redmont shot. This stuff is mm. just insanely good. It's very smooth. I mean, it's almost it's almost like a liqueur. Certainly, I mean, you yeah. can actually sip it, yeah. which uh, you can't really do with most vodka. I don't know how big are these shot glasses. Pretty big. Are they? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a double. Yeah. Be a man at night. Be a man in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, Tony and I, last night, we came over to discuss a little bit about what we're going to do today, and we ended up getting a little, a little sideways, a little side, more sideways than we expected. So it's been a slow, <laughs> slow start for the morning. Yeah, so the hair of the dog here. But this stuff, I mean, you got to say, John. I mean, this, this burns oh, clean. Yeah. I mean, we should not be standing here discussing. I don't feel sure. terrible the next day. Yeah. Where is this? Oh, it's in Birmingham. Oh, yeah. I wonder if you can go like visit the factory. You can't. It's awesome. really cool. Oh, really? That'd be awesome. Yeah, we should do that. So, in case you guys don't know, I don't know if we talked about this last time, but I guess uh, Charles Barkley is is part owner or major yeah, shareholder something. or something like that. You know, I don't know the specifics. He's from it. Alabama. He really wanted to invest in a business uh, that was in Alabama, like giving back to Alabama, and he had it, and he didn't know what. The right one was, and then he found this and loved Redmond, and that's what. Oh, really? From what I read online. Cool. I tried to do a little bit of research on that comet, on the Coking comet. I mean, the, the little bit of information I, I had was from a from a sales ad. So how accurate that is, I don't know. But it said late fifties, early sixties. So, and which I mean, it looks like that. It definitely, definitely denotes late late fifties, early sixties, because everything was, you know. Think about like all the Ford, it's a comet, the Mercury comet, uh, Ford Galaxy, okay. 
you know. That's that what they were going in. Oh, yeah, that everything, makes was, sense. everything was Astro, you know, Jetson. So I cleaned up a little bit, you know, after yeah. watching the last video, I was a little embarrassed about the state of things. So, <laughs> I mean, and the key, key word there is a little bit. It seems a little more hammered than I remember. Oh, yeah, it's pretty trash. You can feel it. it still has the rubberized foam. Uh -huh. You feel how rubbery it is? Yeah. You know, that's nice. It's probably still better than anything you can buy today, but oh, I mean, it's sure. Yeah. Little extra yeah, foam can, yeah it's it starting up, to deteriorate, know? too. But probably just because it's been exposed. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to do, John, is this is a loose cushion. Mm -hmm. But see how, I don't know if it, sh if it shrank or, but I think it should be a little more, it should be a little bigger. So I had a random idea this morning with the design, and you could totally tell me I'm crazy. What about diamond tufting with buttons? Yeah. There it is. Oh, really? It's oh, gone. It's gone. Yeah. Something under here? No. Masonite. So how much do you want to clean it up? We want to like, polish it and do all that? Or? You know, I don't we think, want I mean, we just need, like, really rusted. need to, no, which, this, you know, the real question is, so the laminate is in good shape, which is amazing, because if mm -hmm. the laminate was trash, we'd be kind of hosed, then we'd really be taking it all apart. Yeah. This right here, we can actually, we can spray some contact cement in here and reclamp it, yeah. and it'll be fine. So that really is the only damage, because look, there's, I mean, they were smart about the way they built this thing. They have, yeah. you know, they have the, the aluminum rails around most wear areas. This right here is, I think this is plastic. Yeah. This is just a plastic we cover. Paint on it. Yeah. Yeah. We got to figure out why it's, it looks like it's leaking. So this this looks like it's originally chrome. Um, that's going to be an issue because I really don't want to send that base out to be re chrome. Because you know I don't even know if anybody does that anymore. But this right here is going to be a little bit pitted. Yeah. I think if we just did like a like a it, like leave all this too. Yeah. Like if we did like a satin. Well, this character, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think this is nickel. Is this nickel? I think this is. It doesn't feel like aluminum, does it? I mean, it just well, doesn't I mean, have that feel. Yeah. yeah. The, the the biggest issue is going to be this part right here, the footrest. You know, because this, I've seen a lot of them where they'll they'll buff it out. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's really shiny. I'm not really a fan of that. Nor do I think it really kind of goes with that. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe if we can just clean this up, we'll just kind of. You know, clean up the depressions in here and see what it looks like. Um, you know, it's got to be aluminum, or else it would it would be rusting. Yeah. You can see the the bolts Definitely are rusting. Aluminum. So you know, and even the brackets are metal because they're rusting. We need to paint those. What are yeah. this for? You just rip to like rust your legs. Um. Shoe shine yes. at the same time. Oh, shoe shine. I don't know. Well, typically when you're sitting in it, I think you're, it's like this. And then when you lay back, I think when you, oh, you flip that up and, and then, then the back of your, it's on the back of your legs. So yeah, you're yeah. more comfortable when it's laying down, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, we'll have to figure out how to take this part off. And I'm assuming it's going to be a matter of taking all these little screws out and then this will this, pop off. Oh, nice, nice rumbler out there. Welcome to Alabama. Roll Tide. Yeah. So did you happen to look at any of the YouTube comments off of the last episode? Oh my God. Because sure. Charlie, Charlie on there, <laughs> he's calling me out for not being a proper Alabaman by having the shirt, having a cut, not having a cut off t-shirt. So do you have I one? need to be like, I don't have one, man. Where do you get them? Well, we can change that. <laughs> yeah. Well, shit, let's go do it. You want to go now? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Let's yeah. go get a shirt. I got to be a proper Alabama. Okay. All right. So the one of the last races that I did a couple months ago in New Orleans, I brought back Tony one of these VP racing fuel drums uh, just to have because they're cool. But <laughs> he picked it up in this truck and he's left it in there because he's gotten so many compliments on how badass it looks with the giant VP racing fuel jug in there. So. We're gonna have to do a video on doing a headliner on this thing. All right, all right, Let's babe. We're gonna right, head we'll off to the tractor supply. Give me a cutoff T-shirt, and then we'll actually be able to start working on the carpet chair. So. <laughs> Thank you.
should have a lizard in the door. Oh, look at that Well, we almost got let down. There yeah, was, there was almost you know, they were, uh, it, was, it must have been end of summer, you know, so they had a lot of flannel shirts and, uh, and they must have had a clearance sale or something because that was the last one that, that you know, with the snaps, because you got to have the snaps. You have snaps, 21 bucks. Yeah, can't beat it. Bunny, what you got in your mouth? I bought this thing like 25 years ago from this really cool place in Santa Rosa called uh, Park Sewing Center and it was an older older guy, he was fantastic. Um, and what he would do is recondition sewing machines. Oh really? Yeah, and, and sell them. So, uh, this thing, so you, yeah, extend the, you extend the little thing here, I'm sure all this is not bound up. So as far as the sleeves, what I what I typically do, like if you look right here, I just kind of cut it because you you know this has a cutting blade mm -hmm. and it overlocks it. So what I do is I usually cut it, you know, like if I'm gonna have the thing right here, I cut it like an inch over. Oh really? You know, and it's not scientific. You just cut it kind of big, and then it'll overlock it back to that seam. It's always a little hair raising cutting a brand new shirt, huh? <laughs> So what I do is I usually start here on the bottom, at the bottom seam armpit, you know, because there's going to be a little bit of overlap right there. So see that red line right there? That's that that, oh, that okay. little. That's where it cuts it. That's or where it's it cutting. It cut? No, it cuts it. Oh, okay. It cuts it, and then it overlocks the edge so that it doesn't fray. Yeah, I'm just following it. So I'm just gonna. Basically, they're going to keep that seam to the left. Yeah. So. so the trick is not to have this part right here go back underneath here, because then you end up fusing it all together into a big blob of poop. Cut it off. Voila! Look at that. It's factory. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Cheers, bud. Be a man at night. Be a man in the morning. Cheers. I like these. You see, I like these shot glasses. They're yeah. Awesome. So I have total sympathy for you now on your on your instructional videos where you're trying to talk mm -hmm. and and do something at the same time. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I'm yeah. I'm used to just you know Doing. being here by myself. So you yeah, yeah, yeah. you know if you're talking, it's just kind of weird. <laughs> Look at that sweetness. Jesus. Welcome to Alabama. I like the buttons. Oh, the buttons. Instead the of the best. buttons, yeah. I always get frustrated. Oh yeah. Especially when you get really, really hot, you just rip the shirt open. <laughs> All right, Charlie, am I Alabama <laughs> enough for you now or what? <laughs> Roll snap buttons. Roll tide. <laughs> well, let's get, in, get yeah. into this chair. All right, let's do it. But what about this? What about like, what the hell is that called? The Harlequin, you know, if, if, if the diamonds went this way and, and then put, like, and then put a button where, where the, if we can, we can design it where the, where the seams come together There'd be two buttons right there, and then maybe no buttons on this part right here. Well, what we could do instead of rolling this under like this design, who knows if this is even original? You know, this may not be the original fabric. I, I'd rather a box cushion, especially yeah, if it's yeah. gonna have a top yeah, yeah, stitch, yeah, yeah. you know, because that'll look really cool coming around like that. You know, and especially if it's tighter, you know, if it's like, even if it's almost overlapping like that, look how much better that looks than having, Yeah. you know. And there may be a reason why they did it this way, or it just shrunk, who knows, you know, I don't know why it's that, that much smaller. When you push it forward, will backward. it need to, ba or when you push it backward, will the seat need to move forward and have the cushion? I'm trying to get in there.
See this, I think this needs work. Oh, hold on. Okay. Oh, hold on. Got the well, that's going to need a little bit of work. Or let's try it this way. No? no? It worked the other bit. I right? know. Okay, try now. There it is. So did anything? No, it doesn't. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. It gives it more room. But look at that. They finished that. That's yeah. kind of cool. This is not removable. Why the zipper? The zipper is so it can bolt. The bolts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can okay. bolt the back I got rest you. to I got the, the frame. And even this looks too. This must have shrank. That's all I can think oh, of. Oh, vinyl shrinks big time. Too. Does it? Yeah. And with age? Yeah, it shrinks a lot. Leather does too. Okay. Now the question is so that's that, and then same thing here with just the, you know, the cross hatch. What do you think on here? Maybe just something simple? Like green, green sides, green, green. white, cream, and then green sides. And then what about this? This would look sweet with the with top stitch. Top French how would you, how would you do that here with these sharp corners? Though that'd be that'd be tricky. Unless the stitch just went like this. That's right. You know, and have it cream yeah, instead of like having that. a band like this. Have yeah. the band on the side. I think so. So you like the button idea? Right? I do. I do. The two right there, green buttons. Though. This really is more in line with what you do than what I've done in the past. Because you know, more furniture. Cars. This is yeah. more cars. This is more cars. Too. I'm excited about learning how to actually do a freaking zipper, man. Because oh yeah, I've had to teach myself. <laughs> I'm excited about learning to, the real way to do it. How do we do something like this? Do we use this as a template or make our own template? This it's too tight, right? Well, it's too far. Down. It's too deformed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's too blown out, you know. Yeah. No, we'll make our own pattern. It'll okay. Super. It's not that difficult. Next time when we start making a pattern, I'll bring over some clear vinyl and we'll. Yeah, right. That's how I make it. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. You know what? To figure something cool for this, we should do diamonds like this. Yes. Yeah. We'll see. This that. is yeah, like yeah. Little tiny diamonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To match. I'm glad you pointed this out because I was trying to, because this is like a harlequin, right? Isn't that what that's called with the, with the elongated diamonds? Yeah, because a traditional diamond is it's twice true. as tall as it is wide, right? It's okay. Like if it's a traditional diamond, it's one inch wide and two inches tall. Right. But like, yeah, I don't know what it's called when you extend it taller. I think it's, it's wide. well, I think it's a harlequin, but yeah. yeah but do we do that here too or just do squares? Wow, let's match yeah, the... Yeah, I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, let's tear this fucker apart. The first factory manufactured barber chairs date back to around 1850. Original barber chairs with a footrest were patented in the U.S. in 1878 and were shortly followed by a second chair model that moved up and down using a mechanism. Soon after, these designs were improved upon, creating a chair that had the ability to both recline and revolve. While a few American companies like Koch and Klein were able to improve upon these designs, the largest development in design came from a man from Germany when Ernest Koken developed a hydraulic chair and patented his joystick side lever. Born in Germany and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, Ernest Koken first started in the barber field selling custom design and manufactured China shaving mugs, along with other barber supplies. Ernest had already created prototype designs of barber chairs that were more comfortable and convenient for both the barber and customer when Ernest saw the need for a chair that could also go up and down without a great deal of work on the barber. In 1900, he struck upon what would prove to be his greatest idea, a hydraulically operated chair fitted with a joystick style lever that allowed barbers to quickly and easily control all of the chair's movements. And thus was born the Koken Hydraulic Barber Chair, which quickly became a runaway success with barber shops across the United States and beyond. Koken Barber Supply Company went on to become the largest barber supply company in the United States and remained a premier name in the U.S. through the 1950s. Well over a century after Ernest Koken's first breakthrough designs, Koken remains an influential and respected name in the barbering world. Since 1970, Takara Belmont has owned Koken and continues to produce legacy chairs bearing the Koken name. 
Ernest Koken was inducted into the Barber Hall of Fame in 1975, and his initial designs and patents still form the basis of many barber chairs produced to this day. Good thing we're filming this so we'll remember how to put it back there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a nice shirt you got there. Ugh. This is why I refuse to normally do barber chairs for pay in upholstery because look at all that. Disgusting. What do you think that dude's name was? Ralph? Seymour? Oh, I think nasty. it was probably Seymour. Oh, the, the fan yeah. is blowing it in the air. <laughs> Disgusting. When we bought the house, it had this, this old central vacuum system in the house. And uh, we never used it because, you know, it, it didn't have a, the roller wasn't motorized. It was actually used some sort of suction that, yeah. to make it roll. And it was, it worked, but it wasn't great. You know, it wasn't good as the normal vacuum. So we ended up not using it. So then I, I scabbed it out of the house and put it in here. So I had to, because it's, it's 12 volt activated, right? So uh -huh. it's low voltage wiring running throughout the house. And you have, when you plug the, the, the hose in, when you plug it in here, it activates the 12 volt, which then turns on this to 110. Yeah. So I had to make a 12 volt switch. Oh, really? Yeah, so <laughs> to turn it on from 110. So it's plugged into 110, but then this is your switch. And it was just like vacuum ports all over the house where you just all plugged, the in the, yeah. plugged in the hose. And yeah, and this was the hose. It was actually the hose. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's got some suction. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay, I didn't want to come out. Oh, look at the way that looked originally. Damn. Bright red. Yeah. Ooh. Look how straight those are. Because usually they'll kind of they'll they'll kind of sidewind, you know, they'll they'll stitch and then it will come over. I think this one does it like that, so we'll we'll, we'll show the difference. Man, I don't trust my sewing. We'll, you'll have to do that part. Just practice. Okay. All right. Oh, that's pretty simple too. Is it? Oh, that's dynamite. That's perfect Kinda with the comet. See. All right. So, in case you guys are wondering what the hell this thing is, you can get these at Harbor Freight for pretty cheap, and they're amazing. Oh, yeah. So, this is an impact screwdriver um, for problem children screws that are stuck. So there's a there's a reverse and a well it looks like a left and right. Yeah. So you just, so then you no it's already on the yeah that worked that worked better before vodka. Um, so it's in the left hand position right now. So the theory behind it is as you impact it as you hit it with a hammer it it must have some it sort twists. of cylindrical twist. In there. Yeah. It's so it actually twists. And uses so the impact is sending the force forward, but it's also turning at the same time, so you don't end up stripping the screw. You know, yeah. I mean, basically. So let's try. It's it. a lifesaver on last chance. Oh yeah. See this like a write-off. Yeah. I think they're ten bucks. Yeah. What are they? Ten bucks at Harbor Freight? Something like that? I don't know. I yeah. have a snap on one, but. Uh, <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> That's incredible, the color difference. Oh, I know. Ugh. Touching Billy Bob's hair right now.
There's just a piece of plywood on the back here. Oh, this is a OG Naga hide. Look at that. Naga hide 64. Maybe that's. I think that's a year. Six, or maybe the color. All right, so since we got some vintage vinyl here, this is vinyl. One of the questions I get asked all the time on the forum is what should I use for my project, leather or vinyl? Like, what's better? And for me, it's kind of a difficult question to answer. Kind of because it depends, choice, yeah. and it's a personal choice. And I feel like for older guys, they're so used to just leather always being the best, right? right. Like it smells good, it lasts oh, long, yeah. it feels good, feels good. But for me, growing up doing upholstery, vinyl has the technology has advanced, yeah, a lot, yeah, right. So like you can you can seriously find vinyls nowadays right. that you cannot tell the difference. Yeah. Except, well, by yeah. The, except by the smell. Right, right. So right. Like, or you're sitting there scratching it with your fingernail and trying to get it to this yeah, color. And, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's no leather out there that's going to last as long as mine. No. no. I mean, so if it's, I think if it's in a kind of a high use, you know, if you want some bragging rights on a show car or something like that, oh, leather. Yeah. You know, and I love leather, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, it smells good. Oh, yeah, I love awesome. it, too. You know, I mean, I it's love cool doing just leather say it's all leather. It's good, yeah. you know. It smells nice. But... I mean, nothing's going to last as long as, as, you know, like, so for motorcycles, like that, that bike right there has a leather seat on it. That's a custom seat mm -hmm. that my buddy made for me uh, back in Santa, Santa Rosa. Um, and it's got two different, you know, actually the, the inserts are leather and then the actual, I want to say, yeah, so the inserts are leather and this is vinyl, you know. But I knew this bike wasn't going to sit outside on it. You know, if if yeah. if that was the case, well, then obviously it should just be all vinyl. You yeah, because vinyl will hold up to weather. Right? Yeah, 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 and and temperature yeah. changes and all that stuff. Just Bragging on rights the situation. It really is. Yeah. You know, if it's a show car, go all leather. Yeah. You yeah. know, the other problem is, you know, with leather, it's it's, you know, you've got. It's fucking I mean, expensive. Well, well yeah, and, and then you got to be able to. Think about it. You you got to like make sure that your numbers are right. That you order. All the shit at the same time because if you got to go back and, and get, get more, it's a different dye lot. Then it's you're not, yeah, it could have yeah. a different grain pattern. It could, you know, you're, you're a host, so yeah. you you need to over order. That's why I always tell people in your estimate over order the material yeah. because you may end up not using it. Yeah, but if you fuck up or you messed up on the amount you actually needed, like right. you leave yourself no room for mistake, right. and it's too much down the road. Right. The colors can be different. Yeah. Once and you know, and there's, once you I mean, the one, yeah. there's dye lot differences in, in vinyl too. But oh, yeah, not, 100%. not like not, leather, yeah. you know. I mean, yeah. it's almost, you know, it's like night and day, you know. Uh, so yeah, you need to make sure all your numbers are right. And you may, yeah. I, and I'm assuming, I don't know, but you'd have to order from somebody that you trust that's going to send you this leather from the same dye lot. Yeah. You know, if you're ordering it online, I don't know. Leather's a real like a, a sale. Oh yeah. God, you if know leather. Out sale, yeah, yeah, leather's a real tactile thing for me. You know, yeah. I mean, as far as you know, because here's the other thing about leather. You know, when you order leather, you damn well better know what thickness you want. Yeah. You know, yeah, because yeah. In, in what it's doing, because you're not going to get it to wrap around if you get a thicker, thicker version. You know, and I and oh, I don't yeah. even know enough to know what. That's why you know when I went in the Tandies, it was all about. You know, you touch it, yeah, and you yeah, feel yeah, it, yeah. and you're like, okay, you know, it's this thick, it's going to work, it's pliable enough, you know. Yeah. But you end up getting something too thick, you can't get it to go around corners, no, yeah, you know. Yeah. Or if it's too thin, then it looks like hell, too. Yeah. You know, it looks like a shitty, like a, like a, like a <laughs> yeah. shitty pair of leather pants, you know, yeah. too thin, you know. So um, there's that, too, where, where, where vinyl is, you know, I'm sure there's different thicknesses of vinyl, but there is it's guns and ounce ratings. Okay, but it's still pretty hard. But yeah. it's still at least it's you know it's it's relatively close. You know, yeah. you can say yeah, I this you order some vinyl, you know that's going to work for eighty percent of the yeah. applications that you want to do. But leather is not like that. Yeah, you know, that's like, the thing. What's tough? It's like what, to give the recommendations like hard because like like you guys learned on the material you used in your lawn chairs, right? Like the stats online were fantastic right but then you got it oh, and it was like 
total thin garbage, right? But I can guarantee you, I have scrapbooks, I have sample books with the exact same yeah. statistics and it's way better vinyl. Look at so this like, shit though. It's like paper thin. Oh yeah. It's paper thin. Yeah. Yeah, I hope it holds up better. Yeah. I hope it's some sort of Kevlar reinforced because it sure as hell doesn't feel like much, yeah. you know. But you can't, you order this online. Yeah. You know, and we and got this, we went cheap, okay? We went yeah, cheap. We yeah. went on Amazon yeah. and, you know, like it, it was a good price and, you know, it's not like, you know, you, you at least this thing you can kind of flip the little yeah, sample of it or look it. at yeah. it from the side and see. Yeah. I mean, look, you can see visually how thin that is. Yeah, and then there's very little backing. I mean, God, that's hardly anything right yeah. there. So, but it feels. So it's fu it's funny. Like any, any, it seems to me like any vinyl company can fake the the ratings tests right. that are on the back. Or, like, get them to where it's right. the standard, but it doesn't mean it's going to be honest. Right? Well, you know, that's why I, mean, I always try to stick with like name brand stuff. Yeah. All right, what's does, next? Well, look at that. It does have screws, huh? Yeah. Oh, shit, we can get these off now, and then, yeah. Ooh, those look terrible. We should probably soak those first. This right here, this this mechanism, you can see see that shaft right there. Watch mm -hmm. when I turn it, you can see how it compresses the springs. Yeah, and that's yeah. what releases everything. Here's what I think. I think we take this off. If we can slide this out, we're golden. Yeah. You know what I mean? or the shots we're at that point at every project where you can't figure it the fuck out so you just start taking more bolts off yeah that's what we're doing right now <laughs> and somewhere in the back there it's going what did you get yourself into yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see this uh this, you see this tab this arm so it would have to be able to pivot or else it's not coming out because it'll hit here so it must be able to pop this loose a little is, bit, yeah. And then, and then it must, it must release from a shaft. It off, yeah. I think it's on a shaft. I mean, this it thing, to be. this deal pushes on this, whatever yeah, that, this is. That's yeah. your pump. That's how oh, it pumps okay. the fluid. I think. Oh, what that does is make it go up and down. Does it? Yeah. Well, that's about how far I had it the last So now time. it's going to have to, at some point, before it hits to the side, it's going to have to pivot down so that ear can make it past it. Um, really? Anything? No. Hmm. I mean, what is, what is the screw to? You know, maybe what you got to do is... Here's here's what I think we got to we got to take the four bolts out, and that'll loosen that up enough so where we can enough where we can fire it out where we can slide that whole thing out. There it is. Okay, John, here's the thing. You're up against, look, that arm, remember the arm? Yeah, you're up, we're up against that. And so you either have to slide the whole, the whole chair assembly over now. What the fuck is going on? Can you see at least a little clue of something? <sighs> okay, so turn it back. That makes no sense whatsoever. How'd they do that? What are we missing? That thing needs some oil. Yeah, it does. 
There, now it'll come out. That's what the fucking relief is for. Huh? Okay. So what'd you do? Just turn it counterclockwise? Pull it. it. Like, I thought it was unscrewing, but it was just unscrewing itself, and then I just pulled it. There's nothing holding it in. See that? Okay. I think it just, so there's a key. Once so you pull this should... far enough back, whatever locks in for this, let's go. See if we slide this thing. Okay, what do we hook up again? Oh, the brake, the brake assembly. Hold on. Right. Fine, fine, fine. Oh. Holy shit. What did we get ourselves in? Glad yeah. we didn't fucking anything else. Let's turn that. Fry it out of there. Okay, this goes so in that thing. Let me right ask there, you right? something, though. How in the hell did they get this? This is two separate housings. How? How'd they get this horseshoe in that hole? Ooh, you know what? I bet you that looks like that. Yeah. That's how they did it. Mm -hmm. A little notch. That's right how there. they did it. Brilliant! We should clean all this up, though. Yeah. So this is your pump. This is your hydraulic pump right yeah. there. That's yeah. your piston. I wonder what that spring is for, because it must, that must be your retraction. It's something important, because it's very high tension. This is hardened steel, John. There's no way we did that just now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm a pretty strong guy. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my beard? That's a oh. damn fine shirt you got there. Alabama strong. <laughs> so, the sewing part is going to be the easiest part of all of this shit, John. 100%. Now we've got some cleaning to do. Yeah. I now do I think if we got it this far apart, though, we should make the hydraulics work properly. It can't be any worse than trying to put a wreck, uh, Bentley back together after. Bentleys? They're fun, for sure. There they are. Oh, they're from underneath. That's a piece of engineering. That it really is. We're relearning how it works. Yeah. I don't know where the oil is going to come out out of the top. What do you think it's going to come out? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. oh, that's how they came off. Oh, oh. The one with all the hair encrusted in here is the top. Oh. Speaking of hair, I got it all over me. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> How many different dudes' hairs do I have on oh. my fucking hands right now? Think of it in like a historical way. It's cool. You like <laughs> touch <laughs> generations that have also, you know, have a relationship to that barber's hair. All right. Calling it? I think that's a wrap for this episode of Shot. Sounds Dishes. like a plan. My new hairdo is all jacked up. Dirty as fuck. Sweaty. We're nasty. Confused on how a barber chair can be so goddamn complicated. Yeah, Tony and I, we want to start a uh, section on this of uh, Ask John and Tony. So we're trying to incorporate frequently asked questions that I see on the upholstery form all the time. But you guys feel free to email us with questions and everything, and we're going to bring it up with Ask John and Tony. Tony, what the hell is this Alabama contraption you've got going on so here? This, this is how you save yourself from the Alabama state bird, which is the mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> this is something I came up with because, you know, in the other shops I have those ones you can get them on Amazon. It's just like a curtain. Yeah, with the you magnets. Know? But yeah. with these big, tall doors like this, I didn't know what the hell to do. Yeah, yeah. So I made this... And it's basically a, a trifold screen. And it fits. You just drop the door down on top of it. Uh -huh. And then you just, you just... It's got hinges and it yeah, keeps so, the air flowing? Yeah, it's trifold so like this, so you can get air flowing. I've got a smaller version over there with, that fits around the fan. Nice. And then, you know, the beauty of it is, it's like when you're not using it in the wintertime or whatever, it just folds up flat. Nice. Completely flat, you know. This is basically your intake, this door. And then this is the exhaust over here. So this one goes up. So this goes like this. 
And then this one goes like this. It goes in that tube. And then you roll this guy into place. Flat like that. And you drop the door on. Lock, like that. And you guys drop the door. And then so this right here, this fan's not facing in, it's facing out. Yeah, yeah. Because you were trying to draw it. Well, you don't have to suck the bugs in. Right. And, and you know, the out. problem with this yeah. shop is that both of the doors are on the one side. If it was on the other side, you'd have a natural flow through. But you don't have a natural flow. Yeah, yeah, it's on yeah. the same side. So then you just, you take this. Okay, granted, it's some ham ho shit, but it works. Homemade. I think I paid 20 bucks for this thing on uh, on marketplace. That's awesome. So then you just uh, flip it up. Can you see the whole thing is choreographed, reverse? Yeah. You could. Your shit figured out. That's the damn shit. Are you ready for the next day? Uh, shut up. I hate this shirt. <laughs> Charlie, I will never wear this again in my life. <laughs> you don't like it? No. Oh, it's the greatest thing ever. Not at all. Oh, it's the greatest thing ever. Give it a chance, man. Oh. Well, welcome to our nightmare. <laughs> now it'll be fine. We'll get it back together. Wow. We'll get it back together. Yeah, we will. Yeah. But it was way more complicated than If I we don't, the parts will be pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Man. That was fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. All right, guys, go work on your own projects. Follow our channel. Have a good time. Yep. Drink Redmond. Redmond. Yeah.